So maybe you found part one of this video series and you got that old nasty top ripped off your Z3. You looked at it in your garage and you thought the same thing I did. What have I done? Well, have no fear. Part two, the install video is here. You'll learn the ins and outs, tips and tricks, as well as the do's and don'ts of getting your Z3 covered up and back out on the road. This video is a bit lengthy, but I wanted to make the resource I wish I had when starting this project. I've left in some of the mistakes I've made so you can see where mine went wrong and how yours can go right. So check the tool list in the description below, pour yourself a healthy glass of patience, kit up, and let's give it a try. Jumping right back into this project, the next step is to clean up the mating surfaces where the aluminum bow contacts the plastic ceiling frame, removing as much of that old butyl ribbon tape as possible. Using a wad of butyl tape and a dabbing motion to peel off what is stuck to the frame. Heating in this case does not work and in fact makes the sticky substance even harder to remove. Next is to remove the old tension straps that I mistakenly cut and install a new set. If you're not replacing yours, you can skip this step. The straps slide onto the last cross member which requires removing the T30 bolt. All the straps are attached using pop rivets. I bought a box of black rivets to keep the look semi-professional. Each cross member gets one screw to hold the strap in place. As a reminder, there are links to all the tools and parts you will need for this project in the description below. Part 1 of this video series went over these items in detail, so go back and check that out if you need a refresher. I believe I used a 5 seconds bit to drill out the rivet heads and finish out the holes with a 1 8 inch bit. If you have never drilled out a rivet before, just drill enough to remove the head of the rivet with a larger bit, then clean up the hole with either a punch or a drill bit the same size as the rivet, in this case an eighth of an inch. Here I'm removing what's left of the top strap that attaches to the middle cross member, one on each side. We'll talk more about these straps later. Moving over to the bench, it's time to clean up the aluminum bow starting with removing the residue butyl tape. Again, using the collected wad of butyl tape is the best tool to remove the rest. This is a sticky, nasty process, but get as much off as possible. There's a screw at each end of the bow. Obviously mine has seen a lot of rain and dust, but the screw is still usable, so make sure to save them. Just pick out the crud so the driver can bite in and not wreck the head. Next, remove the first set of staples and pry under the canvas to lift the fabric out along with the staples. Once you get it started, it goes quite easily. The two rear tension straps are stapled underneath the canvas. If you're not replacing yours, make sure to not pull them off along with the outer canvas.
Since I'm replacing mine, I first mark the location of each end. Removal is the same process as the canvas. I did a little clean up, masked off the bottom of the bow, and applied a good amount of super trim adhesive to both the bow and the strap. This stuff is kind of like contact cement on steroids. Give it about five to seven minutes to get tacky, then place the strap, getting it right the first time. A generous set of 10 millimeter stainless steel staples finishes the install. It's worth stressing the use of stainless steel staples. These will be exposed to the weather and you don't want them rusting. Now repeat the process for the second strap and the bow is ready to receive the new canvas top. It's a good idea to tape some fabric over the window in the top. The plastic can scratch easily during the install and protecting it as long as possible is paramount. With the bow lying on the trunk, line up the center notch in the canvas with the center hole in the bow and put in a staple. Next, on each side, using an awl to pierce through the canvas right at the rubber strip, then using the screws you saved from earlier, fasten the top to each corner. That rubber strip around the bottom of the top fits into the staple channel of the aluminum bow. If you have everything lined up properly, the fit will be tight but manageable. This fit up is very important to make sure the final product is smooth without ripples, so take your time and get it right before moving on. Now, starting from the middle, work your way around to one side, making certain the canvas is straight, in the channel, and not puckered, shooting staples as you go. I put my staples end for end right next to each other. The finished top is under a lot of tension, and these staples hold it all together, so don't be stingy. Take your time around the tension straps to make sure the top is all the way seated over the strap. Take your time in this process, it's not a race, and it has to be done right the first time. You can see the spacing I used and how close together the staples are. The final staple by the screw was doubled up for strength. Now back to the center and work your way to the other side. A word about staple guns. You can most certainly do this with a manual spring-loaded staple gun, but this is a lot of staples to drive. If you have a small air compressor, I would highly recommend a pneumatic staple gun. The inexpensive gun I'm using is linked below and is a fantastic unit. I didn't have a single jam and never had to staple twice. A great addition to the tool collection. Now it's time to install the butyl ribbon to the ceiling frame. I ran a continuous bead from end to end about an inch above the bolt holes. In the two corners I added a second strip about six inches long directly above the first bead. Be certain to get the butyl ribbon all the way to the ends and leave the paper separation tape on for now. Now comes the big moment. Set the top on the car with the back of the bow down in the storage cavity.
Unfortunately, I didn't get a great angle on this, but in order to get the ends inside the well, you need to lift up slightly on the back of the bow, putting it near the position it would be in if installed. Then slightly flex the end down and into the cavity. Be careful not to scratch your paint. Your car should be taped up well in these corners. Once one side is in, the other should go a bit easier. If it's not fitting, check the back of the bow and make sure it's not laying on the bottom of the cavity. It has to be up around where the bolts are. But don't try to put a bolt in and hold it in place, as it needs to be able to move and flex to allow the ends to insert. I did try inserting the ends first, but the rest of the bow will not fit past the body. The back of the bow has to go down first. As with many things in this project, Take your time, have patience, and don't force things. You'll get it. Once the bow is all the way inside the cavity on both ends, remove the backing tape from the butyl ribbon. Now while trying not to stick the bow to the butyl tape, adjust the top roughly on the cross members so it is slightly stretched into the correct position. Next, line up the bolt holes on the two frames and push them together, creating an initial bond with the butyl ribbon all the way around. Insert the center bolt and give it a few turns, enough to hold it in, but not tight. Continue your way around the bow, inserting a bolt on the left, then the right, until all the bolts are in, but not tight. This will literally be a huge pain in the neck and back and hips and everything. Working in this part of the car with the top up is excessively difficult and awkward. Once all the bolts are in, go back to the center and tighten them down. Go until they stop turning, then just a little oomph more. No need to break anything. Moving on, install the rear tension straps on the rear cross member by removing the T30 bolt. These will be tight especially if you replace them with new straps as I did. Do so on both sides. Slide the straps up to the original holes on the third cross member and rivet the top and bottom in place. I'll preface this next section by saying, don't do it. Remember that strap that I said we'd come back to? Well, this is it. The instructions that come with the top say that this strap, which is attached to the top just above the window, is supposed to attach to the first cross member right after the front main member. On the original top, this strap connected to the next cross member back, the middle one. Now I assume the folks at Sierra Tops knew something I didn't, so I went about drilling new eighth inch holes Two on each side in that first cross member, installing rivets and calling it good. My loss is your gain. Don't do this. When the top is up and finished, the straps are too tight and pulled the rear window slightly out of shape. Use the original holes and attach these straps to the second cross member where the old straps were. You'll see me do this later in the video. This is the channel at the rear of the side window. I'm spraying some super trim adhesive on the area where the plastic hold down attaches. I did the other side off camera. Here I'm removing the cable clip that attaches toward the front of the top. Using a brazing rod, I put a hook on the end and pulled the spring and cable through the pocket.
I do the same process on the other side. The top comes with new clips that need to be crimped onto the cable and then installed. The spring end is then secured to the main front cross member right under the tension strap. Once that's done, a piece of duct tape is put over the rivets holding the strap to the cross member. I assume this is to keep the rivets from chafing the canvas. Finally, Two T30 bolts need to come out of the main cross member so the plastic ears at the front side of the top can be fastened on with two screws, one of which also holds the cable clamp in place. This is a tight fit and I needed to use a pick to keep the ear in position while I drove home the first screw. Once the top is secured, the two T30 bolts are replaced. Now it's time to pull the plastic mounting strips over the mounting channels and drive home the six screws. This is a tight fit and I found that sticking a pick in the holes helped to pull the top into alignment. Do this on both sides. Next, I drilled out and removed the rivets and the remains of the small side straps on the first cross member. The new ones get attached later in the video. It's time to apply the Super Trim adhesive to the front where the top folds over the main cross member. Learn from my mistake. When applying this adhesive, cover everything. As you can see right there, I overshoot and it landed on the outside top. This was a stupid mistake and I was very unhappy with myself. Fortunately, the adhesive pilled up and came off fairly easily. Unfortunately, I did not learn my lesson as you will see later in the video. After taking a little break to calm down, I got back to it. The adhesive was tacky and I could press the canvas onto the cross member, rolling the fabric over and tight onto the frame. This was enough to keep things in place while I lowered the top to install the steel hold down.
I secured each end, then raised and lowered the top to make sure the canvas wasn't pulled too tightly. I then put in the rest of the screws. Strangely, one of the screws did not line up, so I drilled a new hole and drove it home. With all the fasteners in and tight, it's time to put the top up and clamp it down. When these tops go on, they're tight, very tight. So tight that it's almost impossible to get them locked into position without a second person helping. I'll let you enjoy this little bit with nothing but music. Okay, in the home stretch. The tape and blankets come off. You should be done crawling around the outside of the car by this point. Inside the car now, and it's time to attach the top to the three cross members. This is also the scene of my most regrettable error. Things were going well until, once again, I committed the dreaded overspray. Only this time, it's on black and it does not come off. Learn from my mistake, folks. Mask off the area you are spraying. Having to relive this over and over as I edited this video was pure torture. I will say the stain has faded with some time, but it's still there if you look for it. Highly disappointing. Anyway. I moved away from spraying to brush application. I sprayed the adhesive in a cup, then applied with a brush. This worked okay, but I think there's something about the aeration of spraying the stuff that makes it a bit more tacky. Fold the fabric over the cross member, then install the plastic cap. It's a tight fit, as are a lot of things with this install, but it will go on with perseverance. The second cross member is done the same way. At least I started with the brush on this one. Ugh, I can hardly look at that blemish. I finally learned my lesson and masked the back cross member adequately. I was able to spray the adhesive correctly and not get it where it shouldn't be. The plastic cover on this one was really tight and required a fair amount of persuasion. At least that one looks good. 
The window gasket mounting brackets are installed using T25 bolts, lining up the witness marks made during the removal process. I use some protectant on the rubber seals. For 25 year old rubber they look good, but a little extra protection can't hurt. Installing the rubber gaskets into the channel is a bit fussy, but with everything else on this car, patience is your friend. The rear gasket that seals the top to the frame slides in and clips over the plastic sealing frame. You need to feel around a bit to make sure the two parts seat. Once it's aligned, it'll sort of click into place. It is, of course, a really tight fit at the sides. Then the rubber seal is put in place at the end. I did go back and remove that little piece of tape. I found it easier to pull that panel loose, I just had to fix that body ribbon. Next are the covering caps. At 25 years old, these are very brittle as you can see. A link to replacements is in the description below. I also found these to be much easier to install when the top is down. The liner can go back into the storage area now. With the top up, this is a pain to put in. I feel like I've said this a lot, but just take your time and work it in. Once in place, put all the fasteners and trim clips back. If you're finding this video helpful or even enjoyable, Please strike a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Your interaction is greatly appreciated and it helps motivate me to make more content. There are two small straps on either side at the first cross member that need to be riveted on. These keep the sides from flaring out when the top is put down. I started having issues with my rivet tool where I could not get it to cut off the rivets. I've since tested the tool and it is fine. I think the issue was that because of the space being so awkward, I was not getting the tool aligned properly to the rivet and that can cause that symptom. Okay, remember those straps that we were told to stretch to the first cross member? Here I am moving them to the second cross member where the original one was. For now, I just tucked the extra in, but I trimmed it off later. Congratulations, job done. While researching this project, I came across statements from many who came before me saying if they had to do it over, they would not do it again. Although it was an interesting project, I would agree that it's not for the faint of heart. And if I had to do it again and I could find one, I'd probably use a professional. With time, patience, and the right tools, you can get a good result, but it's not easy to keep a positive outlook when in the thick of it, especially when you make mistakes. Now the top is very tight and difficult to get up and down for about a month, and I would recommend leaving it up and locked as long as possible so it can stretch. After a couple of weeks, leave it out in the rain and then let the sun dry to speed up the break-in process. If you do decide to give this a try, I hope the video series of my journey will be helpful. Leave a comment telling me how it went or even what you thought of the video. Strike a like and if the channel seems interesting, please consider subscribing. I always appreciate that. Until next time, I'm Maine Jason. Get out there and give it a try.